Uh, how do you break down a debacle like that? To help us out, our Cowboys insider Ed Werder in the studio. And Ed, the, oh, the Lions just scored again. <laughs> they just scored another one. Uh, boy, I don't know how you sum up a loss like this one. But again, if the seat wasn't hot for head coach Mike McCarthy, our poll this morning, folks weighing in saying, you know what, they are maybe ready to make a change. It's too soon for that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not too soon to confront Jerry Jones about the prospects of that, and we certainly did that yesterday. And he insisted that he was not of a mind at this point to consider making a coaching change. But the last time the Cowboys lost their first three home games was 2010. You know what happened in 2010? It's the only season in Jerry Jones's 35 years as owner that he made an in-season coaching change. He fired Wade Phillips, and he uh, replaced him with Jason Garrett, who was on the staff. But they were one and seven at that time. It's three and three now. I would say this though, Dak Prescott, we saw him his, his, take a wrecking ball to his Frisco home last week. His team is in ruins right now. <laughs> and Jerry, if this continues, he's going to be taking a wrecking ball to the whole organization, starting with the coaching staff in the offseason. Well, with the bye week coming up, you know that the chatter about a coaching change potentially, is, that's going to be dominating the headlines. But uh, they did try to tamp things down a little bit. Jerry Jones did. It's hard for the players to have something to do with it, though, when they're not on the field. You've seen a ton of injuries along the defensive line, really across this roster, but, but defense especially. The issues, though, that we're seeing that allow a team to come in there, there and score four 40 plus points on you. Is this about those injuries or is this a coaching issue? You've got Mike Zimmer in for Dan Quinn. You've got a different defense. Where do you place the blame? Well, Jerry's right. It is everybody's fault. And maybe he's not being more than magnanimous when he says it's the front office okay. and he'll take part of the blame. I mean, they knew when they lost to Green Bay last year in that disgraceful home playoff loss in the first round that this team was not good enough, and yet they did virtually nothing in free agency to improve the team. They relied totally, totally on the draft for an infusion of new talent. And so, of course, the locker room knows that Jerry didn't make the proper investment, and they're playing accordingly. But to your point, the defense, yeah, they're without – Mike Zimmer's without half his starters. Mm -hmm. They're transitioning to this new defensive scheme. And one of the big things that, that Dan Quinn Quinn created here was a takeaway defense. They led the NFL across three seasons in takeaways, in points off turnovers, in defensive touchdowns. And right now, yesterday, they're minus five in that category. They're minus six for the year. They've scored a league low three points off takeaways. So that's a big part of it. The defensive part of the equation uh, is too often overlooked. Well, in all those categories they led in last year, they're in the bottom five in this year on the defensive side of the football. Offensively, this is a team that year in year out has historically had a solid offensive line that right now is not opening any holes for the run game and if they can't get that going they can't get anything going right they have they can't use their defense or the run game to protect a bad defense they create no offensive balance so they're forced to rely entirely on the passing game now this is one of the big indictments of, of Mike McCarthy because if they go in that game yesterday you know your defense is going to get scored on the Lions are too good your defense is too decimated the offense is what failed and that's what's the most bewildering part of the whole puzzle and that's where Mike McCarthy is most culpable he is the game planner he is is the offensive play caller and yet here we are Dak Prescott with the game you know in hand still in the first half with his third red zone turnover mm -hmm. in two weeks and as he said after I threw that interception I can't think of another good thing that happened to us so uh, you know he's thrown three interceptions trying to get the ball to CD lamb mm -hmm. uh, that's not why Jerry's made Dak Prescott the highest paid quarterback in football and CD lamb the second highest paid receiver in football well and those two didn't get to practice enough in the preseason that's certainly a big issue but that kind of alluded to practice overall yeah. is this team not practicing hard enough I mean what are you hearing behind the scenes so that's another Indi potential indictment of the head coach. That's his first and primary responsibilities to get the team ready to play during the course of a week. And now here we are after the Baltimore game, players like Jordan Lewis, one of the team captains on the leadership council, he beseeched the players for not properly practicing and saying, if you don't practice hard, I don't care how good you are, mm -hmm. you're going to get exposed. Yesterday, Dak Prescott at the podium post game saying the same thing. We have to practice harder. We have to play harder. It's a choice. He said Mike McCarthy tells him all the time that finishing games and being physical, that's a choice. And right now, the players, 
they're not making the right choice. It has not looked like this is a team that's been playing hard since that first week. They do get a bye week coming up, which will hopefully get some guys healthy, but there are a lot of areas they should fix. What would you say is the biggest priority? Well, I think, first of all, it's going to be hard for everybody to live with that loss and that mm -hmm. performance for two weeks. But the good thing is it's created a crisis where everybody can take a look at themselves and ask the hard questions introspectively. Am I doing everything I can do to be as good as I can be? And you know, I think Mike McCarthy and the offensive coaching staff has to get together. They've got to take a hard look at what they're doing, how they're using their personnel, how they could be more creative and unpredictable and more successful. They did that last year. They had an early buy. It came after they got blown out by 32 points in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and they were a different team coming out of the buy. They need that to happen again. Is it going to happen? I can't be sure that that's going to happen. And oh, guess what? When they come back from the bye, they go to San Francisco and play the 49ers. And, you know, they've had great success against yeah. the 49ers in recent years. All right, what would you, your recommendation for fans be? We get a bye week. It's a tough loss from yesterday. You know, maybe take up knitting, on go on a mini vacation, <laughs> you know, a hobby of some sorts. Any get creative with the kids' Halloween costumes. Right, you know, spend some time with the family, touch some grass, step away from the Cowboys for a week, you perhaps. Know, the Cowboys are the only team in the NFL that's lost two home games by 25 or more points. Mm. That's how bad they play. We're number one in a category you don't want to be number one in. <laughs> hey, uh, appreciate your insight as always, Ed. And uh, of course, folks can see your stuff online and catch your stuff on the air, the podcast too. Uh, I don't know that they will want to though, because they need some time so It's away. a choice. Like hey, Dak said, it's a choice. If you want to vent, you can do that with us. Our call and show comes your oh, way at 11. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> 1130 right here on WFAA. And let me tell you, Ed, I'm expecting some hot collars this Monday.